Step three, you grow hard about what you want to be. Step four, fuck everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Welcome, 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 my friends. It's Bradley Ball. I am here with you, Tales in the Field, to do a quick video. Uh, specifically, I've got a customer who's had a little bit of an issue. Uh, one of the things they want to do is they want to understand the best way to be able to stripe physical disk for storage in Azure. So stay right there, and that's what we're about to do. Right. I've got a VM provision, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to connect to it using Azure Bastion. Now, as I log in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up provisioning some disks very quickly. First, I, I want to make sure that we do this step by step so you can see everything that I'm about to do. All right, we're connected to the VM. So one of the things I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to download Disk SPD. Uh, specifically, the machine that I'm working with, it's a DS48. And uh, I've got 48 cores on here. Uh, but what I really am looking at is I want to be able to run Disk SPD. Disk SPD is going to allow me to be able to take any new drives that we attach. Now, the typical thing that I find that customers do is maybe they'll attach something like a P20 or a P30, and we've got about four terabytes worth of space and a certain amount of storage, and, and they automatically look at the numbers that they have, and they go, oh, this is, this is great, and this is exactly what I want. So I'm going to go over to Bing real quick, and I'm going to search for disk SPD. And I probably should have typed download. There we go, GitHub. And I know this gets a little bit confusing. So what we're doing for is we're looking for the releases right here. We come over to the releases. And then right here, we can see here's our, our latest version. You, you can tell that because it says right there, latest. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm just gonna pull the, uh, the zip file. I'm going to open this folder and then I'm going to take the ARM664 and I'm going to copy that folder real quick. in here there's a disk spd executable i'm on the data science vm because it's it's set up as a very nice vm with a lot of different tools that i can use it's a wonderful image that we have over at azure uh, that's why i provisioned this specifically it was very easy for me to open up the browser grab what i need to i've got a lot of different things installed i use this for a lot of different demos in this case though we're we're going to play around with storage so i'm going to come over here open up command shell see um, there's my disk SPD A long time ago, uh, my good friend, Glenn Berry, we were talking about him earlier on our live roundtable show, did this great blog way back in 2015 on uh, testing your storage subsystem with Disk SPD. 
uh, I'm not going to rewrite the will a whole lot. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this command. And Glenn explains all these things very, very well in this blog. And I'm actually going to throw this blog um, into the, uh, the comments so everyone is able to access this. And I'm going to use this. I'm going to come back over. Only bad thing about Bastion, sometimes you get confused where you're at. Uh, I'm going to come back over to the desktop. Notepad. Now, the key thing to keep in mind is what we're looking at is we're looking at the rights. Now, SQL Server writes in 64K. This is 8K. Um, 64 is how we'd like these, this to be provisioned. So I'm going to do 64K right there. Uh, the threads are eight. We've got 48 available. We can leave this at eight, or we could ratchet this up to be able to see what the maximum is that we can do on our server. The point is, when I run this, I want to be able to have all of this be the same for consistency. Uh, we're going to create a 20 gig file. Um, that's going to go for the drive. We'll change this here in a moment, and then the results will go to this. I'm actually going to append the drive letter uh, to the results, and it will write directly into the folder that we created where the exe resides. So let's go create some disks real quick. I'm going to do a couple different things. Uh, I'm going to come over here to disks. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new disk. We're going to call this disk zero. And we're going to make this uh, four to zero. Let's see. Zero. Um, 96, so we got four terabytes. And we're going to do none for host caching. Now, when you look at this, it's got um, 7,500 max IOPS and uh, 250 megabits per second. And that's what the numbers say, right? Trust but verify. That's the really key thing here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how we can um, stripe a disk and we can actually get better performance for this. So we're going to do four more disks. I'm going to do uh, disk one. We're going to do four. And we're just going to do this. And these are premium disks. Actually, let's even have a little more fun, fun with this. Let's do it uh, for 5.12. So. I know, it's so much fun watching you play. Managed to type in demo uh, in uh, in a video, so e even though it's a demo, so this this seven almost there because we're going to get up to four terabytes. But you can see here's the amount of IOPS, right? And if we aggregate this up. Uh, and we create a stripe across this, theoretically, we should be able to way outperform. But we've got the same amount of space. Um, so I'm going to save all of this. It's going to go through a process where it creates all the disks. It does this very, very quickly. And then we're going to hop back into the virtual machine. And we are going to uh, create some storage spaces. Let's see, there is all the successful disks. And it's going to update the virtual machine. And now all of these disks are present. I mean, a lot faster than on-prem, right? OK, so let's come back over to our Azure Bastion. We're going to go to the server manager. That's going to take a little bit for it to find it. It's scanning the internal system. That's what that. Uh, thing is doing right there, the, the status bar is it's going across, we're going to get some additional items. And what we're looking for is the file and storage services that has appeared, we're going to come down here to storage pools. You can see that 
we don't have any storage pools currently. And here's all these different disks as they've been presented to us. Here's our four terabyte. We're gonna create our first disk and we're gonna create that as a storage pool. Uh, and we're gonna say, um, this is our, uh, let's say, let's keep it consistent. Disk, no spread. And we're gonna do this one. I'm gonna select manual. All this does, the allocation uh, will get scanned based off the number that are there. I'm going to do it manually just so we have to walk through that step to be able to do it. Uh, but you could do this automatically and it'll pick up the number of, of disks there. We're only using one disk, so we're only going to get one channel. So once that happens, I now have a primordial storage space. Uh, so I'm going to create a virtual disk wizard. Let's see. This looks great. Here's our storage layout. We're gonna do simple. The reason we do simple is this is not really a physical disk. This is software as code. Um, if you lost these disks, what would happen is there would be a networking connection that would be severed with an Azure between your compute and your storage. And then that would get restored and your storage would be there just fine. This is HDFS storage, three copies of everything, uh, redundantly stored. Again, this is not a physical disk. This is disk as code. So as they say in the matrix, you think that's area breathing? Uh, you think this is a physical disk we're writing to? So we're just fine doing a simple layout for these physical disks. I'm going to come in here, the interleaf side, I'm gonna make that 64K, the number of columns, we only have one disk. This is the number of columns and channels that you have to be able to write to these things. Also from a striping perspective, this is where it becomes powerful. This is also where if people eventually go to add more disks to a storage space, you can't increase the cha channels. You can only set this once. So this is set to one channel for the disk because we only have one disk. We're going to do fixed. We're going to do the maximum size. And we're going to create this. It's going to pop up another wizard. Uh, this is going to be a new volume. Pick our disk, the maximum size. This is going to go with drive F works for me. Allocation unit size, again, for SQL Server, we want this to be 64K. Right. Just to make sure we know exactly where that, that we're running this against. This is going to format that volume. It's going to bring it online. And it's going to give us the access path. All right. And now we'll have our F drive. Now we're going to come back. We're going to repeat the steps. This time, we're going to take all these disks and we're going to right click on them, do a new storage pool, disk with stripe. We're going to do manual across the board. Same results, right? We're gonna get a storage space. And now the disk with Stripe, we're gonna open up and make a virtual disk. Storage layout, still simple. And our leaf size, we're going for 64K, number of columns. I'm gonna go with eight because this gives me the maximum number of channels to be able to get better throughput. I'm gonna go on the provisioning size, uh, maximum size, confirmation. We're gonna create this. And then once this finishes, we will create a drive. This will be our G drive, again, 64K. Once this finishes up, we're all done. If we come over here, if we look at my computer, expand this PC, I can see whoop. 
we now have our F and our G. You can see disk with no stripe, F, disk with stripe, G. So I'm going to edit this a little bit. I'm going to say we're going to test this directly on the F drive. I'm going to say F to speed results. And then we're going to do the exact same test. And we're going to do this with G. Now, we've got this set up to run for 30 seconds. We could have this run for longer if you want to. Um, but the, the key thing is to make sure that we keep the test consistent so we're looking at the same number of things. Again, we're only using eight threads. We have 48 cores on this machine. Uh, we could be using quite a bit more. So we're going to come over here to our command prompt. We're going to go ahead and execute this against F. Oh, I'm not in the ARM64. That's my bad. Okay. Now we're going to run against F. Oh, did I do the wrong one? I did the wrong one. Uh, I wanted AMD. Okay. So hold on. We'll come back here. Let's go back to our downloads. So you can see that um, this is immediately writing out here. And if we look at the size of this file, the size is actually going to be zero until the uh, test completes, and then it will be filled with data. Remember, our F drive is our, our drive with no stripe. All right, that's completed. Let's come back over here and grab our G drive. There we go. Sorry, I slash in front of that. So here's our, our F result in the AMD folder. Still waiting on the G result. Now we have the G result. Let's make this a little bit bigger, get some more real estate. All right. So again, remember the disks are the same size, but what we're looking for is what is the IOPS that we're getting? What is the level of performance? So on the F, and let me move this over a little bit more so we can. On the F, you can see we're getting 243 millibytes a second, and, and this is within the range of what we expected. Uh, based off the 7,500 speed, based off the disk provisioning size, um, and the IOPS were 3,898. However, if we look at our striped, we can see that we had 1,830 uh, 1, megabits per second, and we had over 29,000 IOPS. Um, so we're 
you know, massively, massively over. And this is on a D series VM. This is not even the series VM I'd recommend. If we're going for SQL Server and we're going for some heavy, heavy workloads, what I'm going to want you to do is I'm going to want you to um, go to an M series VM. And for your log files, you're going to want to use um, a write ahead logging drive. Those are only available for the M series. The M series is fantastic for those IOPS and speeds. Um, there are E-series VMs that are also high IOPS uh, VMs that have been produced. Uh, Pamela Howd, um, David e. Mary. Uh, there's multiple people from the SQL product group that have written blogs about these. Uh, Pam calls them uh, sprinkles and double sprinkles. Uh, the new E-series VMs, which are so fantastic. Uh, there were some announcements around build. So I would look at the series that is right for you, but clearly you can see if you want to be able to maximize the performance that you're getting um, for your IOPS, for your disks, uh, all we need to do is this. This is just the total thread IO. Let's, let's take a look at the reads. Um, so looking at the reads performance, uh, this was 182. And you can see I have uh, 1,373. And then uh, the IOPS was 2,091, and we were at 21,978. Uh, when it comes down to the right, we're at 61 megabytes per second. Uh, 980 IL, um, and we were at uh, 456 and 7,312. One of the things I'll tell you, to get the best write performance you possibly can, you want those write accelerated drives, the write accelerated logging drives on the M-Series VMs. Um, by far and away, they're going to be able to blow this speed away. But you only want to put log files on those. They're not meant for... Um, uh, for your, your read-write workloads that go with your data files. For those, you'll take drives just like we did here, um, stripe them together. And then the reason you do the disk SPD is you want to make sure that you're getting the best disk possible. Um, there's always going to be a standard deviation of disk performance. And what you have uh, in one might not be the equivalent that you have to another. And in the cloud, if you get a sub-performing disk, what do you do? you delete that disk and you delete the storage spaces and you delete it from the uh, Azure VM and the disk portal, and then you reprovision it. And when you reprovision it, you reformat and you test. You do all that before you begin working with SQL on the VM to be able to make sure that your IOPS is at the level that you know and expect. And you don't know what it is if you don't test these things. So this is critically important uh, to be able to make sure that you are successful. So once again, thank you so much for joining me. Um, really, once again, super simple. Let's walk through what the steps were. We download disk SPD. That's over here at this GitHub location and I will put this in the comments. Uh, we use the exact same thing and we edit this uh, to be 64K uh, and we use what was uh, actually put on here. Actually, I apologize. Um, Glenberry put this on and uh, and it was 2005, but still fantastic script. Glenn is just an absolutely wonderful, wonderful example of the great people in our SQL community. Again, um, thank you so much for joining us.